Hi, I'm Ross Modulin with Battery Backup Power. Today we're going to talk about some of the basics that you need to know when selecting the right uninterruptible power supply or UPS system. Those four things are capacity, output, runtime, and monitoring. This unit I have right here is a 2kVA or 2000 volt amp, 1400 watt unit. What that really means is that you can put up to 1400 watts of attached electronics on this unit before it won't be able to handle the load anymore. So if you have a 1,000 watt server and a 400 watt TV, you're good to go. If you have a 1,000 watt server and a 500 watt TV, you're not good to go. You need something bigger, maybe a 3 kVA. That's usually what they refer to when you see an uninterruptible power supply product information guide. You'll see 1 kVA, 2 kVA, 3 kVA, 10 kVA, 20 kVA, 30 kVA. You know, what you're really looking for if you're trying to find a unit you don't know much about electronics is that capacity rating. And you probably want to find it in wattage because that's what you're more familiar with. So there's a few things involved like power factor, but what you really want to know is you want to know, well, what's the max that I can put on an uninterruptible power supply and it still continues to work and do its job effectively. And that rating on the product is what you're looking for. Number two is going to be output. Do you want 120 volt, 115 volt, 110 volt, 230 volt, 208 volt? You know, in most cases, you're going to want to get something that says 110, 115, or 120. They're all virtually the same thing. It's a standard socket. You have a, your computer that you can plug into it, your TV you can plug into it, almost any household electronic. So the output, you're probably going to get 115, 110, 120, and, and that's good for your voltage. On the socket side, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a UPS that has what is commonly referred to as a NEMA 5-15. This is what we call a NEMA 5-15R for receptacle. All it means is socket. The plug that goes into this is called a NEMA 5-15P, which the P stands for plug, and that's what's on the electronic itself. You know, other than that, what you probably want to look for is the output wave type. There's a few different types. If you have a refrigerator or an older electronic device, you don't doesn't even matter. It's simulated sine wave, square wave, pure sine wave. It'll probably run fine. If you have a newer electronic device and it's, it's Energy Star or it's a computer and it says it's energy efficient, you probably want to get something that's referred to as pure sine wave output in an uninterruptible power supply. The problem with that is they're usually twice as expensive expensive is what you can find in a brick and mortar store. Um, pure sine wave just means that the unit itself puts out exactly the same sine wave that's coming out of the wall. The cheaper ones that you get put out what's called a square wave or a simulated sine wave and what happens is with newer electronics if the unit switches to battery power and it's not a pure sine wave and it needs that pure sine wave, the UPS won't do its job. The electronic will just shut off or you'll have some sort of other issue that occurs. Now it's not too important if you're just using normal household electronics, but if you're protecting anything that's sensitive like lab equipment, you know, servers, like I said, anything with the Energy Star, you want to get pure sine wave. The fourth thing I'll cover today is monitoring. What you want to do is if you're looking for a UPS, can you monitor it? Can you monitor it through a computer? Well, this one has what's called a USB port, which, you know, if you have Windows, what you can usually do is take the USB cable, plug it right into Windows, you don't need any other software. It's going to find out, hey, this is what the battery level is on the UPS, you know, this is how much le is left, and in Windows itself, you can go ahead and program, well, I want the computer to shut down when the UPS is at 20% or something. The other typical type of communication ports are serial, which is right there, uh, and there's a few other ones. For most people, you're going to want USB or no communication port if you don't need to attach it to a computer. The other option for monitoring is the front panel display. Now, if you have a full color LCD screen on some of these units that, that are sold on the low end, that actually really reduces your runtime or your battery backup time just powering the LCD itself. So you might not need that big colorful screen that you only look at three seconds a year probably want to find something with LED, which is LED really efficient for display, or a small LCD screen so it consumes the minimal amount of power needed to monitor the UPS while it's working. On this unit, you can also find all the different functions and variables that you want on the display panel. Like here it says line mode, I can go through output voltage, output frequency, 
input voltage, input frequency, battery voltage, output load, output watt, uh, volt amps, you know, current, backup time remaining, uh, battery charge level, temperature, battery pack number, rating, uh, CPU version, output voltage, output frequency, and I think we cycled it around. That might be a little bit overkill for most people. Um, this unit's a little bit big and it's got a lot of uh, functionality to it, but you want to make sure that you get a unit that you can monitor or you can get the information you need out of it so you can kind of see what's going on. That's all I have for you today.